Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE. Covering OpenStack Summit North America 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat, the OpenStack Foundation, and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of OpenStack Summit 2018 in Vancouver. I'm Stu Miniman with my co-host, John Troyer. Happy to welcome back a, a company we've spoken to a few times at, at events, Paddy Power Betfair. First time guests coming to us from across the pond, uh, Dave Buckley, who is the automation engineer with Paddy Power Betfair. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, uh, so, so uh, first of all, you've been to a couple of summits, uh, yeah. and we've talked to Paddy Power about OpenStack, um, be, before we get into your um, you know, specific implementation, tell us about you know, your experience here this week and any kind of compare contrast to previous years. Yeah, so I've been very lucky and I've got to come to the, the previous two summits in North America. Um, I guess what I've enjoyed this week, it's kind of that slight tilt towards, so away from being purely OpenStack, kind of towards this open infrastructure kind of thing. Because I guess over, especially last year in Boston, like Kubernetes was becoming a big thing. Um, yeah, and kind of the OpenStack Foundation becoming kind of more, not that it wasn't before, but more community-based and kind of being part of the ecosystem. Um, so yeah, I think it's been quite yeah, interesting not, seeing not that. Not to put words in your mouth, but uh, it was even the last year or two, it's more aware of some of the complementary things. Yeah, and for sure. Adding pieces, uh, you know, we, we, we had one, one of the interviews we did this week was the person who's the, the you know, SIG lead uh, for the Kubernetes stuff, and right. that, that you know, sits under another foundation. Uh, things like that. Yeah, exactly. It's been quite interesting this week, I guess. So the Cat Containers project, which wasn't wasn't something I've been aware of before before Monday morning, basically. Um, I remember we were, like sitting in the keynotes, and they were like, "You can have this this container-like thing, which has all the speed of a container, but it's as secure as a VM." And you're thinking, like, "How how is that even possible?" Um, so I've really, yeah, really enjoyed, I got to go to one of the sessions yesterday, like one of the technical introductions on that. Yeah, I, I always love, there's certain, it's like, there's certain things where, okay, this is what I'm going to do with my schedule and things, mm. and up, oh, this got announced, or I didn't know about this, and you know, blow up my schedule, let me change everything else. Yeah, exactly. I think you always, you just can't, you have to be flexible, right, adaptable, and as the week goes on, you just go to what, go to what you think is interesting. Yeah. So Dave, you, you, you and your company have been working with OpenStack for quite a while, yeah. and uh, you obviously run a, a system uh, that needs to be stable, right? needs to, uh, you take care of uh, you know, betting and, and people's money, right? So, exactly. so that needs to be solid. Um, but uh, I understand you recently went through an upgrade and uh, had some experiences talking about that. Can you talk a little bit about what, uh, where you are with your OpenStack implementation and that sort of migration? Sure, so I guess it was about three years ago, the, it was Betfair at the time, so this was before the merger of the two companies. So Betfair started using OpenStack. And I think it was actually the last time the summit was here in Vancouver. Um, so a couple of my, my colleagues who were kind of the technical leads at the time, um, Steve Armstrong and Steve Pereira, so they flew out here um, to kind of get a feel for OpenStack, what it was, talk to people who'd had experiences with it. Um, and I actually think that conference back then kind of was very informative of what the platform today now looks like. So some of the conversations they had there with people like uh, like Nuage Networks and like Arista, which we use for the switching, um, like the conversations they had there kind of, yeah, ended up being what, we've, what we're now using today in production. Um, I guess, yeah, over the past, past couple of years. So the big thing that happened obviously was this merger between Paddy Power and Betfair. Um, and following that, they, they had an exercise which they called the single customer platform, um, which is annoyingly for like a sysadmin guy, kind of like me, they, it's always been abbreviated to SCP, um, but you have to ignore that. Um, so that was to kind of consolidate and integrate the Paddy Power and Betfair code bases and put it on a single platform, which was our OpenStack and Nuage uh, platform. Um, so that kind of completed in January this year. So that's live. So basically the Paddy Power Sportsbook has an entirely new website, all running on OpenStack. Um, a lot more, a lot quicker and more efficient than the, than the previous version. Um, so that's been a real success. Um, and as part of that, as you say, like stability is like really vital. So kind of in our in our business, if if, if the site is down, we don't make any money. Um, and if that happens during a bid sporting, yeah. sporting event, you have a big problem. Yeah. Um, do, 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 you, do you have a metric around that? What a you know a minute or an hour worth of downtime would be? So I guess it, it always depends. So the nature of our traffic is very spiky. So obviously when you have like a big, so on the Saturday in like in, in Europe, the football, the soccer maybe I should say, uh, is like a very big, a very big deal. We have a global audience. Football's okay. <laughs> okay, we're I'll all stick all with football. The Royal Wedding. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so things like the yeah the football, if if you 
that's we just get peak traffic on that day and even within a year so there's a thing called the Grand National which is a big big event in the UK big horse racing I guess like the Kentucky Derby um, it's kind of when we get our absolute maximum traffic in the year so yeah you kind of you, you always need to be prepared for that um, so one of the things as you mentioned we were kind of looking to upgrade open sack from kilo to newton so we've been on kilo from the start we're rec we've, we're using red hat's distribution of open stack so what red hat offer is this uh, they have like every three releases i think it is they have this long release life cycle so that's the reason we kind of we're going to newton because we have kind of the i think the support will go to like 2021. um but if I remember right, it's Red Hat, the OpenStack platform 10. Yeah. Uh, and 13 is going to be Queens as their next. Exactly. Uh, one so that I think they release. just they just announced that this week, right? Um, so I think we, we'd at some point over the next, I don't know, who knows when, year or two, we'd be going to Queens. Yeah. How, how do you how do you determine when you make that jump and uh, anything around the upgrade process, you know, good and bad that you, you could share? Yeah. So I guess going from. We, we were overdue an upgrade in this case. Um, Kilo is, you know, pretty old now. Um, what we're lucky that we can do is because we have Nuage as like a, an external SDM provider. So the entire data plane is controlled by Nuage and you can kind of plug as many open stacks as you like really into Nuage and you offload all the networking to, to Nuage. Um, so what's that allowed us to do is basically we'd, we'd have had a lot of trouble if we'd had to do a, an in-place upgrade. So I've actually been to one of the one of the the, the groups this week where people were talking about upgrades and just like all the nightmares it's caused. I know it's getting better as like as you know the the releases come out. Um, but what we were able to do is kind of build a new an entirely new OpenStack cloud um, uh, on the side of so we yeah we're not we, we've turned it kind of immutable OpenStack. So your OSP seven cloud is there. We built this new OSP ten, but they both hook into the same networking, so the same new Arch SDM. And we have the way our developers deploy their applications. Um, I guess you want to see this in more detail. We've done presentations at these summits in the past. But kind of in short, every deployment, we do immutable deployments as well. So every deployment will create a new subnet within Nuage um, and kind of do a rolling update of, of, of your VMs that are on that new subnet into like a VIP, which is kind of where the that's where the constant is. So all the traffic's coming to that bit and you just flip things in and out below it when you do a deployment. So what that basically means is, from a developer's point of view, when they're migrating from OSP 7 to OSP 10, um, they'll essentially spin up new networks and new VMs in OSP 10, and that deployment pipeline will kind of just seamlessly, everything else will stay the same because the networking doesn't change. Um, so that kind of takes, so we don't have to have any downtime on the data plane or the control plane. Um, which is, is really beneficial for us because the way, I guess as I've just described, the way we kind of do, the developers do deployments, like we rely heavily on the OpenStack API being available. Um, so yeah, you pay a cost in that you, so you need extra hardware to be able to do that, I guess. Um, but yeah, we found it, it's, really it's nice. something that's worked for us. Great. Uh, anything else with the networking uh, in specifically that you got all are running in terms of uh, the load balancing or resiliency that you, you need to have for your apps? Yeah, so one of the things was, so it's kind of another problem they were trying to solve with this whole project, this new OpenStack platform, is that historically Betfair, as it was at the time, had always run out of a single data center. Um, but we kind of had, we had another site, but it was mainly kind of development environments running there. Um, so kind of the company thought, well, why don't we just have, we should have like both DCs for resiliency, try and run things in like an active-active configuration. Um, which is kind of fine for kind of external, kind of customer facing applications where we kind of had a, an external load balancer that can point traffic between the two DCs. Um, but then the question is like, what do you do with internal apps? Um, so this is what led us to use, so AVI networks, which is kind of a, I guess I call it a cloud, a cloud, cloud native load balancing technology. Um, so we've been using that for kind of, to provide like GSLB for internal apps. So basically, will load balance traffic between the two data centers. So you kind of have it, it gets deployed within your OpenStack environment, has a really neat integration with Nuage, the Nuage SDN layer, um, and will resolve you to whichever data center is appropriate at that time. So if you have, 
if you had a full data center outage, Abby should just be able to go, okay, point so seven over there. So it makes, the, it makes you and the networking team or the IT team into the, into the heroes, not the villains. You're, you're usually the people saying no or we can't do that. <laughs> I guess so, I guess so. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, it's cool technology though. Um, I guess we're very lucky in that we kind of, we're given the opportunity by the, by the people at the company to kind of experiment with new things. Um, so even though we're, we're always, we're about stability, but we're also about kind of trying to push things forward in terms of what technologies we're using. Yeah. Dave, I'm, I'm curious how kind of the hybrid or multi-cloud uh, type of environments fit into what you're doing today. Give, it, give us the update uh, there. Yeah, so that's something very much on our radar at the moment. I guess it's, yeah, it's kind of what everybody's doing, looking, looking to how you can have this kind of hybrid cloud model. So I think, going back three years again, at that time, being like a, an online betting company, it's a highly regulated business. And I don't think at that point, it was really possible to kind of put some of this stuff into the public cloud. It seems like things have come a long way. Um, so it's something we're kind of looking at in the minute, at the moment is kind of, we're evalu evaluating different solutions, different vendors like the Googles, AWSs, and seeing, or even like some OpenStack public clouds, and seeing maybe how could we migrate some workloads out into the public cloud? How do we want to do that to give us kind of bigger, resili more resiliency? And also, as I was saying about kind of our spiky traffic, it just makes a lot of sense to be able to say burst out into whichever public cloud vendor when on a Saturday when the football's on, um, so to kind of deal with that peak load. Um, so it's something that we're yeah we're very much looking at at the moment. Um, but yeah, no no formal decisions as of yet, unless they've done something while I've been away. <laughs> Uh, with containers uh, here at the show, right, lots of different uh, threads, mm. right? Containers, uh, Edge, uh, the, the, the open dev uh, track, and things like that. Anything else, in, you, we talked about Kata, anything else that came up uh, that was interesting here or that, that you just watch in the Kubernetes and, and container uh, track as well? Um, so I guess in, ter in terms of containers, it's, and sitting in the key, sitting in the keynotes on Monday, you would, if you, weren't, if you weren't watching, if you were just listening, you probably wouldn't know you were at an OpenStack Summit, right? Because there's as much kind of Kubernetes container stuff as, as there is OpenStack. Um, it's interesting, so we've kind of been doing, again, similar to kind of the public cloud conversation, it's something that's very relevant to us at the moment. We've done kind of a few proof of concept ideas, evaluating different solutions. So we have like running kind of a cube, a cube cluster ourselves. Obviously we have a strong relationship with Red Hat, so that we've kind of explored using OpenShift maybe. Um, and of kind of the networking layer, you can kind of integrate with Nuage, which would be really cool for us. So it allows to do kind of the, all the networking and like the access control mechanisms like as we do for virtual machines. Um, and again, this is also something in the, in the whole public cloud conversation is where if we wanted to do containers in the public cloud as well, like you, you have all the different offerings, would we want to like run our own uh, in like an AWS or something, or maybe go to someone like Google where you kind of have that supported uh, self-service model, I suppose. Um, but yeah, at the moment it's kind of, it's at, it's at those stages. So I, think, I think Steve did a presentation on the Kubernetes stuff, at like a, a POC we'd done at the last summit. Um, but yeah, it's still, it's still at the moment, I still want to make some firm decisions about like which direction we're going to go, but a lot of the developers um, are very keen for this, naturally, and obviously like info guys like us also, we all know the value of it. So I think, in, I think at the moment, because we've had that focus on stability, we should now have a period of time where we're able to kind of look at all this stuff a bit more, kind of hopefully, yeah, get some container solutions into production, which awesome. would be awesome. Well, Dave Buckley, really appreciate you giving us the update. Uh, love to be able to do some of those longitudinal case studies as to mm. <laughs> where you've been, where you're going, what you're thinking about. Uh, be sure to check out thecube.net. You can actually search for uh, Patty Power Betfair, see some of those previous interviews from, from, from Dave's peers. Uh, loads more interviews there, as well as all the shows we're going to be at in the future, where hope you come by and say hi. For John Troyer, I'm Stu Miniman. Thanks so much for watching theCUBE. <laughs>